You're listening to Sacks in the Basement, a production of the Broadcast Basement Limited, where every show is 30 minutes of good and comes from a basement bar on the south side of Chicago. Pull up a stool, pour a cold one, and join us right now for Sacks in the Basement. Heard everywhere podcasts can be found and always at SacksInTheBasement.com. Um, I have uh, this stuff, this goo on my arm. It's, I, it, I'm not even kidding. I got, like, moisturizer. What have you been doing? I shot it on my arm. It looks like I walked in on an orgy at just the wrong time and didn't get out unscathed. Oh, no. Just don't judge me. It's, 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 it's on my, and it's on my really, like, this is one of the better giveaways the Sox did last year. It's like a red, white, and blue, like, old, it's got, like, the, the regular Sox symbol to it. Inside a, it's got, like, a Inside six, of, like, a, a star. six-point star, which I'm assuming is from the Chicago, fl- one of the stars on it, the Chicago It kind of looks flag. like the Chicago flag in the background, like, in the color, so it's got red and the blue. So it mixes, I can wear it with my, with my black Sox hat, because it's got, it's got the regular Sox symbol to it, and I can wear it with my 83 hat. So this is, like, one of my favorite shirts, because I don't have to change hats with you don't it. have to color coordinate well, no, that's the thing like you can't sit around and wear like your 83 jersey with your black current style white socks hat oh, yeah that looks see weird. what i'm saying yeah, and you can't wear weird. the 83 hat with like the regular pinstripe white socks you know jersey like you you have to you kind of look ridiculous when you do it I, i've seen people do it before but you look ridiculous when you do it and so, like, I'm I, hopefully this will come off of my shirt. I'm sure it is some sort of moisturizer thing that was on the bathroom counter that my wife was using for some. Who knows? And how to get in your shirt? Because I, I leaned over to get something in the bathroom and I hit the I hit the part of the, like the nozzle, and it shot me oh. on the shirt. And now it's all over me. It's a PG podcast, yeah. so I'm gonna just I'm just I'm I just got gonna leave it I right got there. hit. Okay, I got hit. Sometimes things come flying at you. D- d- I'm just trying to explain that this is this is moisturizer. And that's all it is. Okay, man. Okay? I, I wasn't going to ask. So I'm trying to explain Don't ask. You. Don't ask. Don't you tell. came over and I didn't have time to clean up. Jose Abreu's in the All Star game. That's awesome. And I think I mean, that's really cool. Even though he's be, having, he sh- even though he's slumping right now, I think it's awesome. I think Jose should be in the in the All Star game. I mean, oh, he deserved it. He deserved a, he deserved the votes. He deserved to be the first. And I love the fact that the nation voted him. I, I love that all of baseball put him in the All Star game. Because he would have been the White Sox selection. There's a, if, if he wouldn't have been a starter, he would have been the clear selection. And it's not a situation, just to clarify, it's not a situation to where, you know, like Jose Abreu got in the All-Star game because, well, you know, one White Sox has to be in it, and, well, I guess we'll just pick him. No, I mean, he was actually voted in as the starting first right. baseman. You know, well-deserved. Jose Abreu has been nothing but consistent in his tenure here with the White Sox. He's having a typical Jose Abreu year, even though he is slumping right now. You can expect that he will pull his average back up into the 280s, 290s, where where it normally is. Right. Well, I don't know what his schedule is right now for the All-Star Weekend. And I don't know if they've set the home run derby in stone. I, 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 I don't. But the thought has crossed my mind just today, sitting here with you, that because he's going through the slump... I would love it if he did the home run derby because you always hear these guys that their swing gets screwed up or something while they're in the home run derby and they have bad second halves because they're, they're trying to hit the ball out. But I feel like a Abreu's thing just watching it is some sort of confidence issue. Like he just doesn't seem right at the plate. Hmm. Like he started to slump and he needs to get his mojo back. You know what I'm saying? Going out and hitting a bunch of home runs in front of a crowd while they're cheering might be just what the doctor ordered. If he gets the opportunity to be in the home run derby, I'd love to see him in it this year. I mean, it's interesting. I don't have the stats in front of me, but I wonder if Jose Abreu's like anywhere near the top of the league in home runs. But that this doesn't year, matter. So MLB I mean, has such a hard time finding people to do it because a lot of players don't want to do it because it screws up their regular swing. Interesting. I mean, they have to beg Bryce Harper to do it. I mean, they're, they're, they, they have to go and send, like, a team of people to go speak with some of these guys. Like, hey, would you please do the home run derby? Because, like, we advertise that the best people are going to come and hit, and then nobody does it. There's been years where guys come out there who have five home runs on the whole year because he's the only guy that was willing to go stand out there and be the, the final entrant. Wow. So I would think that we'd be able to get a Bray in if he wanted to do it. I would hope that – I would love to see him in it just because I think he needs to find something to snap out of his funk. Now, speaking of the All-Star game and the fact that a Bray was in. Okay. Imagine if there was some sort of requirement where you had to have two people on from every team. Okay. okay. It's okay. a weird, bizarre world. And the <laughs> way that the all-star game has gone over my lifetime, it's been very bizarre. So you, who knows if this will actually happen one day, 40 man rosters and there's gotta be two from each team. Who knows? 
if you had to pick another guy right now on this team at this point for the All-Star game, who would you pick after Abreu? Because Abreu is clearly the number one, right? Yes. I mean, that's, that's your guy. Right. Okay, who would you pick? Uh, I'd go with Avisail. But he hasn't played enough. Like, I thought about that. Right. But he hasn't played a lot. Like, you're right. He's the second best player on the team right now. I think in it, my mind, it would have to be if if we're in this fantasy world where you have to pick two people, no matter what, um, Avisail would be my choice, because if you have to do that based on previous based on his previous year alone. Right. And the fact that in the short time that he's been back from his injury this year, he's on course to have another type season like he did last year there are plenty of times uh in in baseball or in other sports like where guys get in uh to the all-star game based off of previous accomplishments i know me being a hockey guy the hockey all-star game is is constantly like that there have been years where like you know keith and seabrook have been you know, voted onto the all-star team and you look at their years that year, they're not, not having all-star years at all, but they're on there for previous accomplishments. So for me, if it was, you know, to answer the question, I would put Avisail on there based on the, the short uh, amount of time that he's been here this year, plus his accomplishments last year. See, I, I get that. So maybe, maybe you rephrase it to a way of at the halfway point this year, who's the second best player on the White Sox. Well, yeah. Would it still be Garcia? I, absolutely. Even with the with the small sample size. I, I mean, see, I because I, I, I'm I'm with you in a, in a lot of ways. I'm not I'm not saying that I I completely disagree with you, okay. But it, to me, the name that popped into my head first, I said Garcia. Garcia is clearly the the second best hitter on the team. Um, I don't like his glove that much. I would I I and we'll get into later how I envision him if he stays on this team where he's going to end up because I'm going to bring that up in a little bit, but. I liked, I, I liked him, but I was worried, okay, if I had to disqualify him because he hasn't played enough this year and I had to take him out of my mind, I thought of a guy who I love to yell about. I love to scream about. I just, he aggravates me all the time. The, at the beginning of the year, I was like, oh, God, that's who's pitching? James Shields. Because he's really reinvented himself over the last couple of months. And if you look at his first half stats, there is a guy that if they needed to bring another guy on – could have come on as a pitcher on the all-star team. Well, There's a guy that I hope is trade bait. I hope he's done enough that somebody wants him. He would look great on a National League contender right now. You normally take an American League pitcher and bring him to a National League halfway through the year. A lot of times they hit the ground running. They don't have to deal with that DH. They got to deal with, they got the pitcher at the back end of the order and some defensive player who doesn't really hit really well in the eighth spot, and they just start killing it. Jose Quintana. I, I would love it if somebody went out and grabbed James Shields. We're not going to get, the, we're not getting anything great for him, but maybe you get a piece. Maybe you get something. You know, so yeah, I, I would have no problem if they got rid of James Shields. But uh, but I but I think that he could be an argument for your second player in the All Star game. James Shields is interesting because I don't have the stats in front of me, but you know, the last time I looked at it, um, the, the win loss record is terrible. Obviously, but right. we can discount that because but I don't the, count the, wins because and the team because the team is bad. Right. Um, After the sixth inning, this this the, everything's up for grabs with this team. Right. I always look at like how do they do through the first six innings? They did really well today. Well, that's a win even though they end up losing because the bullpen is a dumpster fire. The ERA on James Shields is, was okay. Last time I looked at it, um, the whip is kind of there where you want it to be. I mean, based on our conversation last time right. about pitchers and whip and things like that. Um, I mean, yeah, you could make a case for James Shields, I guess, but there are just so many other better pitchers in the American league right now. So I, I don't know. If There's that so would many be... better at everything, though, in the American League right now than what we have. True. There's a lot of better at every position than what we have. There are so many better second basemen. There are so many better shortstops. There are so many better third basemen. There are so many better outfielders. Like, I'm just... <laughs> I mean, it's a ludicrous discussion because there's really not a second All Star on this team. Right. But it was—I just thought it'd be kind of fun to bring up. But let's let's be honest. There's so many better of everything. There's so many better managers. I'm starting to think of too. But I don't want to pick on Ricky this week. I'm getting there though. I'm yeah, getting no. close. I'm okay. getting close to it. I'm getting close to it because I I'm trying to de- I'm trying to determine whether or not he's making decisions based upon the long game of well, let's see what this guy can do, rather than what the intelligent baseball decision in a game is. Is he a bad in-game manager or is he just throwing stuff at the wall to see how a guy reacts 
and I can't be mad at him for some dumb decision because he makes a lot of what I would think would be dumb decisions if you were trying to win the game. Right. Okay? Like, why are you bringing Chris Volstad in? Well, You have a chance to win this game, and he should stick to brewing beer in Jupiter, Florida with with, with his friends or his brothers or whatever he's does, got. He, does he brew beer? He's got a brewery, oh. and he should go there, and he should stay there, and he should brew beer. Oh. To me, I would do that if I were Chris Volstead. I want, I want, I, in fact, I pledge right now to buy a case of Chris Volstead's beer, no matter how bad it is, and I will keep his beer in this bar for all of the existence of this podcast if he will just go there tomorrow and never come back. If you had to deal one guy, if if somebody came to you and said, I have this prospect package and I want to give it to you, and there was somebody in there that you you liked, and you're the general manager of the White Sox. We were talking and like a top 10, top 20 I don't, MLB I don't prospect. Know what, I don't okay, know what whatever. It is. Sure. Whatever they're offering, you like it. Okay. And they said, but I want either Abreu or Avi Garcia. And you would get the same package. For Abreu or Avi Garcia. Like, during the negotiations, it's come down to the fact they're just looking for a hitter. And they're actually willing to take either one of them for the same package. And you like the package. Which guy would you trade? <sighs> Garcia. Really? I think so. You would trade Garcia? I do. So you're trading a guy that's still in his 20s, still in his prime years. Late 20s, though. Uh, Late 20s. I think he's 27. So I mean, like that—that's uh, he's not—he's not older than that. Okay. Okay. So I, I, he, I think he was 26, turning into 27 this year. I'd have to look that up, but I, he's right in that range. And Abreu is about 31. Okay. And you're trading Avi Garcia. Why? A couple of reasons. Um, as I had mentioned before about Abreu, so Abreu has been nothing but consistent since he's been here. Okay. Abreu will just about give you. 25 to 30 home runs and a hundred RBIs just about every year. Okay. And, and he's been doing this since he's been here. Um, the other reason I keep Abreu around is if you are getting to that point where the young talent on this team is ready to win. So let's say it is 2020 or 2021 and the, the team is primed to be contenders to me, you're going to need a veteran leader like Jose Abreu on this team somewhere. I, I don't know if I see Avisail Garcia as that veteran leader type. That's reason number one. Now, reason number two is that as far as Avi is concerned, we've only seen a year and change now because we're talking all of last year, right? Right. Where okay. Avi was just insane. And, the time that he's been back from injury this year where we've seen what Avisail Garcia has advertised to us to be. Because remember, he was advertised as the second coming of Miguel Cabrera. Okay. It, it He's maybe there now. I mean, we certainly saw that last year. We're starting to see it this year. But up until that point, we have not seen that. Out of him. See, but I think that I think that you and other White Sox fans have discounted Garcia because he didn't come in and he wasn't awesome as quick as you wanted him to be awesome. Okay, think about it this way. The the adage has always been, and I have seen the stats now, a lot of sabermetricians will show it to you, where the prime years of a ball player when it finally clicks for him is at 26, 27 years old. And that's just where it happened for Garcia. I just looked it up while you were talking. He's 27. Okay. Okay. Abreu's 31. He had his 26 year was his breakout year. And if he doesn't get himself hurt at the beginning of the year and he's not dealing with his hamstring thing, if you, if you, if you believe that that was his breakout year, he's building on it now since he's gotten back from the injury. Right. So my thing is you're in a rebuild anyway. And you're not competing next year now in his 28 year and Abreu's 32 year. Okay. And now Abreu's 33 Inch. or maybe even 34. Cause if you don't, if this doesn't come together as quick as you want it to, and it might not, 
33 in 2020 and a 34 year old player in 2021. That's when the decline is happening to players. Okay. See what I'm saying? Right. So my thing is, I don't think he's going to be the effective guy you have now when it counts, whereas Garcia could. And I also have always felt that Garcia is not a right fielder. He's not an outfielder. Okay. I've never, I don't think that's where he ends up. I think Avi Garcia is playing first base in really? three years. Really? Not, I think not Avi D- Garcia not, is playing. Not DH. No, I think he's standing at first. I think he's standing at first base. I think he can play that position. Okay. I don't think that he's playing the outfield. I think he's one of these guys they convert, they bring him in, they have him work out at first base. He might end up as a DH. I don't think he's supposed to be in the outfield, but I think his bat is going to mash right around the time. When you need him, you're right about the leadership thing. I don't get that from him. I don't get that vibe. Right. Abreu is the clear leader of the team. But at some point, he's going to decline. And I just don't know if he's there in in a couple years when you need him. Like, I love him. I don't want to trade either one of them. Honest to goodness. I'm not interested in trading either one of them. I think whatever you get for him, unless it's like a, a like a package where you know those guys are going to be ready in the two or three year window that you want to start bringing guys up. I'm not going long-term prospects with these guys. And the reason because I like the both of them on my team. And the reason for that is because both of their contracts, uh, if I'm not mistaken, both of their last time I, both of their contracts uh, expire in 2019. So 2019 is the last year that both. And are you're going to have to pay one of them, and that's the problem. Right. So so but but the point is this: if 2019 comes around and it looks as if the the it looks as if the young kids are developing the way that you want them to, and 2020 looks like you could be contenders. You're paying them both. You pay them both. You, right. you, okay. abso- you absolutely right. pay them both. I think a, a big... Plus pu- a dump truck full of money for Manny Machado. <laughs> right, exactly. I'm sorry, I want a dump truck full of money dropped mm-hmm. on Manny Machado's lawn sometime when free agency begins in this offseason. I don't care where he ends up right now in the trade thing. I don't want him in a trade. I don't want him as a rental. No, because he's a rental right I now. I want to yeah. dump a truckload of money on his lawn. I want to put him at short where he wants to play, okay? I want to laugh as Brian Anderson makes a face about the entire thing. And Brian I, I, Anderson? Or what is it? Uh, Tim Anderson. <laughs> Brian, they both, Brian they both, Anderson. Brian, listen, Brian, Brian Anderson Ag- is just as annoying as Tim Anderson in my book. They both aggravate oh, me. They're no, both unrealized no, no, talent no, no, in my no, mind. No, no, they Brian are. Anderson I'm is sorry. Way, Brian Anderson is way no worse than Tim Anderson. No more Andersons ever on this team ever again. Brian Anderson is way worse than Tim Anderson. <laughs> listen, at least Tim Anderson is that not. That is true. At least Tim I would Anderson, rather have Tim Anderson At least Tim Anderson. Anderson is not getting into bar brawls with Nick Swisher at 115 Bourbon Street on a No, but he's yelling at umpires like he did this past weekend when he should have swung at the two pitches that were right down the middle. I did see that. He had an at-bat where he's out out there and he takes a pitch down the middle and Steve Stone goes well you're not going to get very many more of those and two pitches <laughs> later he gets another one right down the middle against Dallas Keuchel and he goes hey, 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 what's he waiting for like that's th- that's what they're talking about in the booth and it's like right. I'm screaming at TV like what is he waiting for and then he, he's out on a slider that he clearly goes around enough on that it's strike three okay and he thinks he checked it up and he starts throwing the f-bomb at the umpire's direction I mean 90% of the umpires would have rung him up and thrown him out of the game right there. Okay? The way he was talking to him, and he's getting dragged back to the dugout by, I think it was Garcia, who actually came out and dragged him back to the dugout, while he's swearing at the umpire, and luckily he got an old-school umpire to kind of turn around like, I'm not listening to him, he's an idiot. He should have swung at the first two pitches that were down the middle. I think the in his, he def- infuriates me. In his defense, though, I think where he was mad is that he didn't get a first-base appeal. But you're right, I get it. But that's not guaranteed to you, and you should have swung at the pitches that were down the middle. I mean, I tell kids when I coach them in Little League the same thing. What do, what, why is the bat on your shoulders? Okay? And yeah. I even understand the idea of I'm going to take the first pitch because I want to see what the guy's doing. I might be going through something, whatever. When you do it a second time in the at-bat, you don't have a right to yell at anybody when you end up striking out. Right. Because you, you gave the pitcher two strikes. And this guy's, supposed to be a, this guy's supposed to be a future core member of my team, but he can't control his emotions in a situation like that. I don't know. There's just something about him that drives me uh, up the wall. If he was good at defense, I'd excuse it. If he was hitting 290, I'd excuse it. But you're 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 a middling hitter who's not good at defense, and you're doing stuff like that. Those are the things that just drive me up the wall as a fan. I mean, it's bad enough I'm watching bad baseball, but I can accept that. But there's a point where the cup overflows with my annoyance. And Tim Anderson seems to be lately the guy who's constantly pouring that last little bit into the glass, and it overflows, and I get aggravated. You know, and Brian Anderson too. <laughs> Screw him. Brian Anderson. <laughs> The following story is completely true. The names have not been changed because 
Hi, I'm Chris Lanuti. Oh, really? You gotta read it? It's three words long. You're, kinda, you're like getting ready, like adjusting yourself. Join me and my friends as we belly on up to my homemade nine-foot oak bar in my basement on the south side of Chicago. I'd say expose them to as much violence and nudity as you can at an early age to prep them for life. Was it hard to climb up the ladder in your skirt? No, it's just embarrassing. Oh, okay. Each week, we talk craft beer, sports, fatherhood, and the oddities of life. Your show is so different and fascinating. Wait, this is a podcast? <laughs> I just come over here to drink. Join us for 30 minutes of good each and every week. <laughs> Welcome back to the Missing a Chromosome podcast. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's the Broadcast Basement on Stitcher, iTunes, and BroadcastBasement.com. If you had five guys, it has to be alive. You can't pick somebody who's dead, okay? Okay. You had five people that you would want to interview on the Socks in the Basement podcast. Because now we've, get, we've done some shows. We've had a few people come on as guests, Okay. They're, but they're media people, okay? And maybe you want another media person. Maybe there's somebody you'd like to talk about who covers, talk with who covers the team. Maybe you want to talk with, talk with a player. Maybe you want to talk with somebody that's in the front office, something like that. If you could pick your, 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 your top five people you'd love to get down here on the show, I'd love to hear that and why. And I, I've got my own list, but I, I, I want to let you start off because I went out to dinner last night with my wife and, and, and a couple of friends, okay. and the comment was made that I talk too much. <laughs> I don't know what they're talking about. What, on this podcast on everything. or just in general? Even at the table. I guess I was talking too much at the table. You? I, I get on a roll. Never. I, I don't know. I, it's a curse. Anyway, that's why I want to let you start. Well, you're in the right profession. <laughs> um, well, I don't know if I come up with five. I'm just going to sort of shoot from the hip here. Um, eh, well, I mean, I would definitely love to talk to Rick Hahn. Rick on to get his take on how he feels things are going. Well, I mean, that, that, that might be the ultimate interview that's, guest. That's the, that's, if yes. we get Rick on, you just close up shop socks in the basement. Will we, will we, how do we ever top that the next week? No, you can't. I'm okay. just, well, I'm, I'm unless I get of, Rick on down here to have a beer with us. I'm, I'm stating the, I'm stating the, like obvious, I'd like to have obviously. him sit at the nine foot homemade Oak bar in my basement on the South side of Chicago. Who else? Well, Ricky would be a good one. Okay, so Ricky Renderia. So right now we're looking at we're looking at a GM you'd like to talk to. You'd like to talk to the uh, you'd like to talk to the manager about the team. Any players? Any players you'd like to get down here? You know, it would definitely be interesting to talk to like a Bill Melton or a Frank Thomas or somebody who go, who somebody who does the post game. Okay, who's actually you know who has baseball. Experience. You just got to pick knowledge. one more guy. You got four already. Oh, well, okay. Pick so one so more I, guy. I, I was thinking, so or. Pick, pick me one more. Just grab one out of the air. Just just reach out and grab him. Like, who jumps into your mind right away? What about like a Yomer Sanchez? Or I like, like a, that one. Or like a, yeah, or like like a Matt one. Davidson. Oh, you, now you're picking two. Which one would you rather have? Uh, well, I'm pretty sure you're going to pick Davidson, so I'll go with Yomer. Okay, cool. Then I'll start right off with mine. I would take Davidson because, one, he was cool enough to retweet the show to his followers. And we've talked about him enough on the show that I would love to get his take. And he seems like a cool guy. Yes. My lead question to him, though, would be I actually watched his uh, there was something a day in the life of a White Sox player. OK. And the, the NBC uh, Sports, whatever, Comcast, whatever, whatever the they hell call it's called, it, whatever they call okay, it this yeah. week. Yeah. And, and I wanted to ask him, like, when you guys go out and you meet, you know, your girlfriends and later marry your wives, is there like a factory where they make these women? Because they all like his wife was in the thing. And I was like every single one of them is just like, it's like something out of a magazine. Is it because you're a ball player or because, you know, you're just smooth? Like, I, I, I like I would want to ask him that. Like, I, I don't know why that struck me while I was sitting there watching the show. Like, I'd be like, how do, how do you guys, even, how do you guys do this? Even, what do you, do you think even, it's, do you think it's you or do you think it's because you play ball? Even, like, I would love even to ask players that. that are bad. I mean, remember Josh Fields? Yeah. Remember that dude? What? Yeah. His, 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 like he was doing something. He was doing something outside of the ballpark, signing autographs, or he it was some maybe charity thing, and and he was at a table and nobody really was up there because nobody you know really cared, um, <laughs> but but I yeah his his wife was his wife or girlfriend his wag if his you wag, will his wag was with him and I'm just like oh my god where do they find them this guy is t a terrible ball player and how look does at the he... girl he's pulling in I know right I, I don't know if they hand him out in the minor leagues like is there like a like a like a like some sort of matchmaker thing that they do in the minors. This is what this is what this was the question that popped in my mind while watching that. I'm like, I would love this. This would be something I would ask Matt Davidson if I could get him down here. Like, where where? How do you guys do this? Is there like a secret like setup place or something like that? You got an? Is there an app just for ball players? Like, how does this work? Swipe left. <laughs> Do you guys like on your Tinder account? Is it just you in your uniform? 
<laughs> is that how you pull? Maybe that not in? even that. Maybe, maybe just how the do you do that? Maybe just the uniform. Maybe, maybe that's it. I have no idea. I don't. I don't know what it is. Now, I would now, also want to talk to Jason Benetti. Oh yes, I forgot about Jason. I would love to talk to him. I I I love how he broadcast. I love how he. Um, how he describes the game. There are a lot of people that don't like him because they're Hawk fans and they they, they don't like the change in how things are. Well, I love a, how he okay. plays that, off the of stone. I enjoy him. That's okay. The, anybody who likes Hawk Harrelson is not going to be alive in another five years anyway. So. I know. There's some people who just love the Hawk Aru. Like just, people they, our they age it. and younger. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's, I, that's, there are some people who love him. I like the Hawk for the nostalgia factor, but I can't deal with him for 162 games anymore. You see, see it saying? surprises me that there would be any people our age or younger that are actually into the hawk because baseball is so statistic is, is so driven by some people don't like stats. Now. Some people don't like stats. Wow. Some people want to believe that they're this year is their year no matter what. That this year we're all gonna pull it together and we're gonna be good. When there are people like us who are pragmatic and sit there and say, nah, we're not that good this year. I guess. I want my guy Ron Kittle. I was gonna say him, but I knew you were gonna pick I mean, him. I so. want him. That's my guy. I love me some Ronnie. Absolutely. I would love to get Ronnie. I think Ronnie would come and hang out at the actual bar. He might be the only person that we might have a chance of actually getting him here. He still lives in Gary, Indiana. I know. Not? I think I can get him to come over and just sit at the bar. I'm going to start pestering him very soon on social media. Awesome. Media. So I've got I've got those three guys that I would definitely want to talk to. I'd love to have AJ. Yeah, I was going to say AJ too, but See again, I figured you would pick him. I'd, yeah. I'd love I'd, just because I think he'd be very interesting. There's no way he would do this. No. AJ Pazinski would never come on this show. And then my fifth person I would like to have on the show, and you already took Rick Hahn, so that's why I have to pick somebody else. I would love to have Brooks Boyer on. Okay. Okay. I would love to talk about some of the inner workings in the ballpark and how they make the determinations that they do about, like, you know, anything from their marketing to the stuff that they have at the ballpark and and market the fans and everything like that and, and, and the evolution of things over the last, let's say, 20 years or so. But when it was like a shopping mall and now it's like an actual ballpark. You see what I'm saying? Right. Like and, and where what direction they take things in and what kind of feedback they get from fans and all those stuff. I'm I would love to pick the brain of him or somebody inside the organization just to kind of like get in a mindset of how they not only see their fan base, but how they, they wanna they wanna present the product to the fan base. Because I think they've done a really good job recently with it. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I better, it's not their fault the product's bad. No, better better yeah, better than in years past, I think. Yeah. It's not their fault that the product's bad. No. And they and, and this is a difficult thing to try to like sell to a fan base that you're doing a rebuild. And I think they've done a pretty good job of it. You know? I I, I actually have I, I haven't had an issue with how they're trying to do that. And when you go to the ballpark, it's enjoyable. I'm going this weekend. Oh. I'm gonna do boys' day. You can come. What taking uh, your godson with me? What day? Huh? What day are you going? I'm thinking it's Saturday. I think I'm gonna go to the ninety three thing at one o'clock in the afternoon, like the 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 reunion. I was there when they clinched in ninety three, you know that? I, I was like a blubbering know. idiot. I was like a teenage kid. I'd never seen them win anything because I don't remember 83. 83, I was so little. I just know my dad woke me up the next day and said they won, they, they, they won the division. Like, I didn't get to stay up and watch it. Right. Okay, but I was actually, I actually drew tickets. Like, we had, we just happened to have those seats months in advance, and it just happened to be the night that they actually clinched. And I got to, I'm sitting there with my father, watching that game, hugging him, tears in my eyes. I was like a blubbering Aww. idiot. Oh, I was so excited. I think I was like, I love you. Like I was like, it was like the greatest thing ever. Now I look back and I'm like, ah, it's just a division. But it was at the time, it was like the greatest moment of my life. Well, it was harder to win the division back then. Right, but it was like the greatest moment of, of my life. 93 was like the greatest moment. of Like when they clinched it, I always thought to myself, this will be the greatest game I've ever seen in my life because we're never going to win the World Series. So this will be the greatest thing I've ever seen. In person, greatest event that I've ever seen in my entire life. It, it turns out I've seen, I don't even know if it makes it into my top five anymore. It has to be for the nostalgia sake of it. And I, that's another reason why I'm like, I'd like to go. But Eric has taken, taken my daughter out of town. Okay. So I got, the, I, got the, I got the two boys. Yeah. You and, know, I, and I asked the older guy, I'm like, what do you want to do? And he's like, I uh, want to go to a Sox game. And I'm like, I love you. That's a brilliant idea. We're if, going you're, to uh, if you're going Saturday, I got I to gotta pass because I work till about oh five. Oh, my God. Come on, man. Party, you own your own company. Yeah. No, I know, which means. Just close up shop. You could do it. You're a baller. Yeah, no, but the problem is when you're the boss. <laughs> And then you're not there, and and That's what you, you leave, that, the, you why leave you the, the boss to their devices. This is why you devices. become the boss. This is what everybody's dream is to be the boss, so they can do that stuff. 
That's what you're supposed to do. Come on, play hooky. Go to the White Sox game with me. Yeah, we'll see. Come we'll on, see. 93 reunion game. I bet you Bo will be there. Oh, Jackson. Come man. on. It's got to be Jack, Blackjack Black McDowell Jack walking McDowell's around out there. there. Yeah. Halfway through the celebration, they're going to give uh, they're gonna give Carlton Fisk a motorcycle and tell me he has to leave. It's going to be great. That's it. That's it, Fisky. You're out of here. I was at that game where they gave him the motorcycle, actually. <laughs> it's like they're nicest, the nicest way we've ever told somebody, we don't need you anymore. <laughs> Here's the motorcycle. I'd like Do me a favor. Ride it off into the sunset. I'd like to get fired that way. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Another show is wrapped up, another show's in the books, another show is wrapped up, and then by the looks it's gonna be a good one, and we'll see you next week, and the nude is basement, and the nude is basement, another show is wrapped up, another show is wrapped up, another show is wrapped up, and it's in the books. Another show is wrapped up, another show is wrapped up, and by the looks, it's gonna be a good one. New Deal's Basement, oh, broadcast, Basement, the New Deal's Basement, the Broad Basement. Slancha. That was like Dropkick Murphys or something, right? I felt like it. <laughs>